Hello, we're Team 23027, and we're working on the mobile reagent filling system, and our mentor is Steve Laramore. We've been tasked with developing a non-contact fluid level detection system for our sponsors, which are Roche Tissue Diagnostics. My name is Devyan Sharendra Rathor, and I'm currently majoring in biomedical engineering. I'm the team lead as well as the software lead for this project. My name is Adrian Arvano. I am the electrical lead, and uh, I'm currently majoring in biomedical engineering. Hello, my name is Samantha Matarobles. I'm user interface and communication lead, and I'm currently studying biomedical engineering. Hello, my name is Jared May. I'm the mechanical lead and currently majoring in mechanical engineering. Hi, my name is Adrian Rodriguez. I'm the technical lead, and I'm currently majoring in systems engineering. Hello, my name is Amanda Villegas. I'm the procurement lead and the optical lead, and I am currently majoring in optical sciences and engineering. Our sponsor company Roche has developed a tissue staining device called the Benchmark Ultra. This instrument holds various types of reagents and uses them to stain microscope slides in order to perform medical testing. The Ultra currently uses seven different reagents, each stored in a bulk bottle, and currently there is no fluid maintenance technology used by Roche. This leaves the detection and refilling of the reagents up to the technicians at Roche, a process that is time consuming and prone to human error. The Ultra is under consistent use and needs the appropriate reagent levels to function. To help solve this problem, our team has developed a mobile and AMR compatible device better known as the Philly, which is capable of non-contact fluid level detection for the reagents in this ultra. There are some constraints that we had to take into consideration while designing our Philly. The first one is that our system cannot access or touch the fluid inside of the bottles, and that the bottles of the benchmark ultra cannot be modified. In addition, all of the analysis had to be done from the front surface of the bottle. And for chemical safety, um, since all of the reagents are water-based, our tests are going to be done using water. We must also consider that whenever the bottles are refilled, they're only filled to 80% of their capacity, never 100%. The bottles are made using an industrial mold, which means that no two bottles are ever exactly the same. In all Ultra devices, the reagent bottles are always in the same order. We have seven reagents, but there are eight bottles. Two of these bottles are connected via a tube, which means that they're in equilibrium. There are two different sized bottles, a small bottle and a large bulk bottle. We also have to consider the environmental conditions, such as lighting and angle of the measurement. Finally, for this project, all our requirements are to be tested and passed on a test card provided by our sponsor. We establish a set of requirements for a final design, including compatibility with humans and the AMR, accurate fluid level measurements with a maximum error of 300 millimeters for small bottles and 600 for large bottles, constraints disallowing system contact with fluid and bottles, maximum physical dimensions of 36 by 24 by 48 inches, and a maximum fully loaded weight of 125 pounds, and a 30 minute minimum operating time without recharge or external power. We use these requirements to narrow down our candidate solutions. In the early project stages, our team designed a capacitance sensor system in order to detect liquid levels. It was clearly decided that this is not an accurate way enough to measure the liquid level due to the project constraints. The design concept we decided to provide our sponsors with quality results was a vision system. This design includes a camera which images the bottles and uses pixel analysis to determine liquid levels. The ambient light is controlled by a light blocking mechanism built into the design so that we can control the environmental conditions. After selecting our design concept, we proceeded to give a definition by creating a system architecture and system block diagram. The diagram illustrates the relationships between system components and external actors. The Raspberry Pi 3 serves as the central component, controlling the GUI model and bottle analysis for technician interaction and fluid level measurement. The system includes lighting and a camera to gather information from the Ultra, a tablet for technician interaction, a mobile cart to hold all components and allow AMR interaction, and a rechargeable battery to power the Raspberry Pi. The system architecture includes sub-assemblies and subsystems that inform the system block diagram and provide a list of necessary components. The mobility and adaptation subassembly is a critical component, as are the software subsystems that are integrated throughout. The mobility and adaptation subassembly comprises the cart, which will house all the other subassembly components being the GUI, camera, and battery. This system is constructed using 8th inch HDPE sheets, along with 6063 extruded aluminum and a quarter inch A36 steel plate. Using these materials, a frame was constructed out of 6063 aluminum for all the additional materials to be added onto. On this frame, we attach HDPE sheets to block out any environment light, such that we can control these conditions for any environment in a steel plate on the bottom section to allow for future storage for future projects. The final portions are ones to ensure we can create a consistent point for the camera to take an image from, as well as a way for the system to be controlled by an AMR. The first part of this section is a camera mount to secure the camera to the HDPE sheet in the system. The other portion is created using the HDPE sheets and a PLA handle for the AMR to grab onto. The software system comprises two crucial parts, the fluid analysis software and the GUI. The software for this project governs the entire process, starting from device login and ending with the display of fluid level data. The fluid analysis software is further divided into three major components. The first component is responsible for capturing the image. The lights are turned on, the image is taken and saved, and then the lights are turned off to conserve power. 
The second component of the fluid analysis software is the image processing and analysis algorithm. Gamma correction is applied to the captured image and it is then converted to grayscale. The image is then analyzed to detect the bottle boundaries. Each bottle is then treated as a separate entity to ensure accurate fluid detection. Fluid level detection is done by pixel intensity comparisons starting from the bottom of the bottle. Once the change in pixel intensity exceeds a preset threshold, the software detects the fluid level and saves it. The top and the bottom of the bottle are also detected using the same algorithm. The fluid level can then be obtained using these values. This algorithm runs on all four of the bottles and the output is a compiled result with all the fluid levels displayed. Reagent identification is the third component of the software. Each reagent clip has a different color and impedes the fluid detection accuracy. To tackle this problem, the clip boundaries were identified and the clips were excluded from the fluid level algorithm. The clip colors were then determined and matched with the appropriate reagent. In the end, the fluid analysis program outputs a table consisting of the following data. Reagent number, reagent name, amount of fluid in the bottle, and amount of the fluid to be filled. The app was developed on Python 3 using Kiwi libraries. This interface allows the user to create an account using their name, email, and choosing a password. Once the account is created, the user will be able to use this information to log in into the platform. After successfully logging in, the user will encounter three buttons, one for running analysis, another for seeing stored data, and the last one for logging off. Once the user clicks on running analysis, a message will be displayed that reminds the user to double check that the card is correctly aligned with the device. Once this is done, the user will input the information of the name of the device that is going to be analyzed. After, the user is going to be able to click on Begin Analysis to have the fluid detection uh, section of the code running. When the analysis is finished, the other three buttons will be displayed, one for running another analysis, the second to access the stored data, and another for logging off. The secrecy of the system consists of a Raspberry Pi that communicates with the Pi camera, LED strips, and a data board. The data board then communicates with the touchscreen display, which allows interaction with the Pi. All electrical components require 5 voltage output in order to be powered properly. Therefore, a 5 voltage rechargeable battery with a capacity of 10,000 milliamps per hour is connected to the Raspberry Pi to power the entire system. In ensuring the overall system is compatible with the test cart and AMR, we have done two separate tests. The first is a simulation to check if the system can be controlled by an AMR. For the test cart compatibility, we have done multiple readings by moving the system into the test cart and taking the image to then be analyzed. There was no change found between all these trials. In order to satisfy constraints, our system analyzes the fluid levels via a vision system. Therefore, there will be no modifications made to the bottle or the ultra instrument itself. To ensure the cart fits inside the allotted space and weight, the cart has been weighed using a scale and measured in all three dimensions. To be certain that our system will last for 30 minutes with the rechargeable battery, we analyze the amount of current that our system will consume and then run the image analysis every two and a half minutes while being powered by the rechargeable battery for a total of 60 minutes. By keeping track of the percentage of the battery during the testing, we found that our battery will last significantly with over 93% of battery life. Once again, we're Team 23027 for the mobile reagent filling system and our sponsors are Roche Tissue Diagnostics. Thank you for watching our video.